In news, listening is absolutely half, half of the game because you need to be able to know what your story is, what your message is that you want to send out before you can do it. So you need to ask a lot of questions, but you've got to be ready to listen to what the answers are and be able to, to turn that into something that everybody will be able to listen to. The best way that I communicate is by giving someone my undivided attention, whether it be customers or colleagues, so that I can listen to what they need and, they, um, and I can also tell them what my responses are. You need to have listened. You need to understand where the other person is coming from. You need to be able to have a quality called empathy, which is, is almost a, um, uh, it, it's part of listening, but it's really listening with your whole body, you know, uh, having an emotional feeling uh, and being able to pick up other people's emotions as well, being aware. Listening is the greatest expression of love and respect. So when one is listening, you're building relationships. When one is listening, you're showing care and concern for what another person is saying. When one is listening, you're setting up opportunities to collaborate, to cooperate. To improve your listening skills, you must commit to practice and training. Pay attention to all communication around you, including verbal interaction and body language. People know I'm listening because I, I, I'm very big on eye contact. To me, the eyes are everything, and you can tell if somebody's paying attention. You can tell if somebody even cares about what you're saying by looking them in the eye, and if they're looking back at you, you know that there's a connection there. Understanding that their body language, that their nonverbal expressions, whether we're talking about face, whether we're talking about eye contact, it's very important. So when I am attending to you, when I am clear, that I'm invested in what you have to say. I can practice the actual behaviors. Sometimes it helps to ask for feedback, to repeat what's been said, and to make sure that both of you interpret the same message. This lets the speaker know that you understand and makes him or her more receptive to your response. Try not to make, to make as little assumptions as possible and always do a clarifying question at the end and say, this is what I heard, is this correct? And you'll be amazed how many times uh, that there'll be some more uh, clarifying. It'll be something different than what you thought. And you'll be off because people don't always express their needs in their first um, communications or conversation. It takes a little deeper digging. And getting people to talk is one of the key parts of listening. Repeating back what you've heard is often a, a key thing to confirm with the person. So what I've heard you say so far is X, Y, and Z. And that's a great way to close the loop. Plain and simple, listening is critical in communication. If you tighten up your skills at work, it will also have an impact on your listening skills in life. When you're listening, clear out any mind chatter or other things going on inside your head. Pick an environment free of distraction. Pay attention without any preconceived notion of what's going to be said. Try to understand where the other person is coming from and show respect and concern for what he or she is saying. Don't interrupt. Look at the other person. Use body language to show that you're listening. Clarify that both of you interpreted the same message. And practice. Pay attention to your own verbal and nonverbal interaction, as well as the interaction of those around you. <laughs>Nonverbal communication is a large part of listening, but it's also a part of communicating as a whole. Studies show that 78% of your message is implied through your body language. Tone of voice, speed of voice, posture, expression on your face, um, handshake, uh, dress, all of those things will tell a lot about and very much about who you are before you've even said a word. People can tell when you're serious. And if there's any, ever any discrepancy between the verbal and the nonverbal, what most people will do is to believe your nonverbal message. That is, if in fact you're communicating and says, well, I'm glad to be here, I'm talking with you, and you're really important to me, but during that process, they're looking off into the wild blue yonder, and their tone of voice is very lackluster, 
people are not going to believe that. Uh, with face-to-face -face contacts, I think that uh, body language is the most important aspect. You can tell if someone's interested in what you're talking about or whether they're just listening to humor you. Um, you can tell the level of interest. You can tell the level of understanding. Um, you know, people have some quizzical looks they give you or with hand gestures. It really does make a difference. You can learn a lot. All the subtleties make a big difference. Uh, when talking to a client, those are paramount. If you find that there's something he doesn't understand, you go back to it. And you can could, you could pick that out on their face. Or if you hit a point that's really a hot spot, something that it's an issue they've been working on, maybe he hasn't said that, but it's of utmost importance, you'll catch that. You'll catch that, hey, may I just hit on something that I should maybe go into more detail with. And uh, it's, I mean, it's critical. You can't live without it. Um, it could be as simple as uh, nodding your head every couple of minutes. Or it, it could just be something as basic as looking in their direction. Every day, I am on the phone communicating with my customers and the way I keep it effective is I put my feelings because when you're on the phone, people can really tell what you're doing, um, how you're feeling in your voice. Even if, you're, if you have a smile on your face, someone can detect that. So remember that most of your message will be sent using body language. Pay attention to your voice, posture, eye contact, and facial expressions. Your body language will reflect your true feelings about the communication, believe it or not, even on the telephone. Communication via email can be tricky because the business world is still determining what's proper etiquette. To be safe, maintain professionalism in your registered login name and in your message. That means no slang and no spelling errors. So I think some of the things that um, help a workplace be a respectful workplace for everyone is to have the content of your emails um, reflective of those things that are going to be supportive of your environment, those things that are not off-color jokes or um, things that you wouldn't show your mother. Email can be a wonderful tool when you need to share fundamental information, like notes from a meeting or a quick reminder. But for time-sensitive or personal communication, it's best to speak to the person one-on-one. -on -one. Human contact should not be underrated. I don't think email is appropriate in a situation where somebody may feel bad about their performance or may, may take something the wrong way. It's better to have that face-to-face -face contact. Um, email is not the proper venue when you need to narrow a grievance, when you need to uh, respond to a, a, a crisis type of problem. And yet another problem with email is the tendency to try to communicate too much information. The email is becoming problematic because people try to, to do too much over email. And email does not allow you to adjust your communication for the interaction or understanding of another person. Email is great if you're not working under a real tight deadline, but I can think of a few times off the top of my head where I've been sent notes about things that are changing, a story that's changing, new details that I haven't gotten because I've been so concerned about the deadline and getting my story on the air that I haven't had, had the time to pick up the message and be able to, be able to, to adjust accordingly. Somebody may not understand the message that's not concise, so it, there's definitely room for miscommunication through an email. We send a lot of attachments with our emails, uh, case studies, press releases, that sort of thing. And a lot of times people don't want to download it, especially if it's on their PC that they're picking up their email, it takes longer, or they don't bother to look at it, they see a huge file and they just delete it without looking at it. Don't let this scare you away from email. Just remember what's appropriate for work is different from what's appropriate at home. 